fraud analysis, the second part. So over here we're concerned with figuring out if within our data there are any invoices which have a, a weird um, value to them. It doesn't quite fit with the rest of the transactions that we see, which is exactly what, what, what fraud um, people would look for. You would investigate weird looking transactions to figure out if this is legitimate or not. And we're going to use the same program, go down and we're going to do uh, a very simple flow this time, which is actually pretty automated. We're going to, again, because of performance reasons, um, select just the data that's within December. That still gives us 3,000 uh, data points. And um, from it all, we're just interested in the only numerical feature that we have, which is the invoice total. And what we're doing is we're going to put this into a clustering algorithm where we're normalizing our, our data. Um, again, I don't want to get too mathematical. but And then we're passing it through this clustering algorithm. Now, this clustering algorithm uh, basically measures the distance between all our transactions. And if there is a particular data point which is very far, that's, that's why we have this representation over here. If a data point which is very far from our um, from the other data points, then we end up getting it marked as noise or, or as uh, anomaly. If we look at the results of this uh, algorithm, we end up seeing that there's uh, quite a bit of of uh, data as expected within uh, our cluster, our cluster C1. Um, yep, in fact, almost all of it. But then if we go down towards the bottom, we see, listen, there are actually a few, these ones over here, a few data entries which did not fit into our cluster, which means that they are noise. Um, so we have here the invoice number, which we would be able to copy and paste into our report. And we also have the invoice total. However, the invoice total was normalized, if you remember, uh, by standard deviation. And uh, to make this a bit more intuitive, maybe we should put down the original invoice total, um, which is exactly what to do over here. We're merging the original data with the output from our clustering algorithm, and we're displaying it as um, a data table. Now, if we go down to the very bottom, and we again have a look at the data points which were marked as noise, we see that, yeah, um, for example, our first noise, uh, noisy data over here actually had a return, an invoice of uh, 13,000 sterling, you know, is what, what went wrong over there. And similar story for the rest of them. Uh, there are some extremely high value transactions over here. This one was 168,000, give or take, uh, sterling, while the rest of the transactions you see are in the, in the hundreds, not in the thousands. So these are very obviously um, anomaly data points. And I would we would just end up copying the the uh, invoices and putting them into our report for the customer, telling them these are the ones uh, the following uh, invoice numbers should be investigated. So now from about three thousand give or take data points, we now ended up with 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 very few, which the fraud team actually needs to manually check. So that. It was a very quick um, fraud analysis uh, algorithm. Let's go on to the third and final video.